May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Welcome to morning worship on Sunday the 23rd of August 2020 at Cramon Church. The psalm for today is Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us pray together, the Collect for today. Almighty God, you have taught us that without love all our doings are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all the virtues. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading today is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, and we're going to read from verse 13, and this is Peter's declaration about Jesus. When Jesus went to the territory near the town of Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, Who do people say? the Son of Man is. Some say John the Baptist, they answered. Others say Elijah, while others say Jeremiah or some other prophets. What about you, he asked them. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus. For this truth did not come to you from any human being, but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation I will build my church, and not even death nor hell will be able to overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, what you prohibit on earth, will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then Jesus ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Thanks be to God. Amen. The splendid passage gives a clear message, which I'll summarise in a cricketing phrase. Get on your front foot. <laughs> Get on your front foot. For Mark, Jesus' searching question, who am I, is the crucial question. While for Matthew, writing later, it is Jesus' response to Peter's answer, which becomes the focal point. So I'd like you to keep in mind that response. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let's return to cricket. England are playing Pakistan just now, and I think we can find a useful analogy in cricketing terminology. If someone is firing a hard ball at your body and your head, just batting is courageous. Often our first inclination is to defend and to take a step back. It takes time to convince young players that it's sometimes better to play on the front foot. If you play on the back foot all the time, 
It is easier for the bowler to get the upper hand and to dominate. Using the front foot, you have more opportunity to take control of the game. There are times when as individuals or congregations, we should be cautious and step back to defy all the things that are being hurled at us. As a church, we can at times play off the back foot. However, it can also trap us. We might settle into a cautious, defensive mode. I hear that the coronavirus may be leading some congregations into that dangerous cul-de-sac. In contrast, Jesus never allows that to happen. He retains the initiative, asking questions, moving around, teaching. He played on the front foot in his ministry. What is more, Jesus had remarkable faith in his friends as agents of change. He put the new kingdom into the hands of a rather motley team who gathered around him. I now say to you, he said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not be able to stand against it. What did church mean in this context? The Greek word behind the English word church denotes a gathering of people. It was what happened in response to good news as announced by a town crier. If a crowd gathered in the market square to hear the message, that crowd was an ecclesia, a church. The Christian church was formed by the message of Jesus. Later, the apostles were heralds of that teaching. The ecclesia was and is the gathered people. Not a building, not an institution, but people sharing good news. It is an event, a movement flowing on and through history. However, in trying to talk about the church, early Christians did sometimes use the metaphor of a building. The danger here is that we slide towards thinking about the church as an actual structure. Thinking of the church as a building has persisted. No longer was the church a gathering of people on the move, inspired by the gospel of Jesus. It became the church on the back foot, defensive, holding out against the enemy. Fortress church became a common way of thinking and talking. Considering church as the people of God, listen afresh to Jesus' words and spot how the meaning has become completely reversed. Jesus said, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Here it is not the church that is on the defensive, but the kingdom of evil. It is the gates of hell that are under siege, besieged by a loving people who are on the move. Here the church is not on the back foot, but the front foot. Offensive, not defensive. Proactive, not reactive. As they are the creative heralds of God, not curators of a museum. I suspect that today in the midst of the virus, some even here in Edinburgh are in negative mode. I fear that too much of our current thinking is rather defensive. We have taken up positions behind a wall which we're trying to defend. So where are we in Cranand? Here the minister and elders have taken initiatives planned ahead and worked hard to get this church open. They have sought to use modern technology, website, Facebook and so on to communicate with members, the parish population and beyond. The halls are being upgraded as we speak and organisations are being invited to return as soon as possible as a new norm 
develops. It is great thinking. So let us in Cramond remain on the front foot with our eyes fixed on Jesus and listening to his teaching. We are his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Forward is the word. So onward together with the excitement of living with faith, hope and love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us bring our prayers for others. Let's pray together. Living God, we name you as the eternal living presence and now in our prayers the immortal touches the human. Eternity dips into time. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, we worship and adore you. And we presume now, when we choose, at a time that is right for us, that you will listen, be available to us, hear our prayers, for you bid us to come and you tell us that you are ready to listen. You call us to confess, waiting until we bow down. You expect our penitence. Then you say, stand up, stand up, my child. You are forgiven. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree and wither and perish, but not change thee. Listening God, you call us to come with our prayers for others. Guide us now by your Spirit as we pray for those who are in our minds at this time. We pray for those who hunger for righteousness that they may be fed. We pray for the American people as they begin to consider their choice of president. We remember the British people as we move towards leaving the European Union. And we pray for the global community as leaders seek to make good decisions during this pandemic for health and for the economy and for the well-being of all. We pray for Cram and Church. Keep us one in faith and service on the front foot so that your good news may be shared in word and action. We cannot love you unless we love our neighbours as ourselves. So we pray for our enemies and our friends. We pray for those in need. We pray for all who sorrow. Hear these and all our prayers. We bring them in Jesus' strong name as we pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us go with God's blessing. Live in God's world with courage. Love your creator with all your heart. Be challenged by the Spirit's promptings. Hear the call to serve Christ and be obedient to God's will. And may God bless you and the Spirit restore you and Christ's presence strengthen you this and every day. <laughs>